You know, electioneering sounds like a decent description of something someone does. Like electioneering, engineering, auctioneering, pioneering, imagineering. It's not as magical as that one, though. Merriam-Webster defines electioneering as to take an active part in an election, to work for the election of a candidate or a party. Well, Idaho law defines it as something that is not supposed to happen within 100 feet of a polling place. But it's also not supposed to happen by any of Idaho's public agencies or any of its employees. And that's apparently what one of Idaho's highest level employees is accused of doing. Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan has been told twice by the state attorney general's office she is violating Idaho's Public Integrity in Elections Act with a couple of newsletters sent out by her office. They notified the lieutenant governor within, with those two letters on consecutive days. The first one, dated November 3rd, referred to a newsletter sent out last month on October 13th. The email titled, Mutinous Republicans Assemble in Boise as Economic Woes Accelerate. And you can see the official letterhead of the lieutenant governor's office attached to it. It refers to Tom Arkush, the Democratic candidate for attorney general, as, quote, a radical Democrat, saying, Openly endorsing a radical Democrat is the most obvious way of confirming that you are, in fact, a Republican in name only, she said. The second instance, which was brought to the AG's attention, happened last week, November 3rd, the day they sent her the first letter. This newsletter brought up the constitutional amendment on tomorrow's ballot, SJR 102. That one, if passed, would allow the legislature to call itself back into session. We'll get to that in just a second on your screen. In this communication, once again with official Lieutenant Governor Letterhead, she writes, SJR 102 would put the controls of the legislature back where they rightfully belong. And SJR 102 serves to restore the structure of the government where it should have been all along. So Idaho's attorney general's office saw those and said, you can't do that. They reminded Lieutenant Governor McGeehan, as a constitutional officer, you have to follow certain rules, rules that were passed very recently, in fact. The Public Integrity in Elections Act, Title 74, Chapter 6, Section 2, which passed in 2018, by the way, says neither a public entity nor any of its employees shall use nor shall a public official authorize or use public property or resources to advocate for or against a candidate or a ballot measure. Public funds can't be used, it says, and that would include, I would assume, her own salary used typing these things up or using state websites or maybe paying people like, oh, I don't know, the former spokesperson for your failed campaign for governor who was recently promoted to your office as director of strategy and constituent services, maybe paying Michelle Hamilton $37 an hour to write said newsletters, maybe that would be a violation. Lieutenant Governor acknowledged she got the letters from the AG's office. And just today, Lieutenant Governor McGeehan put this out on her Facebook page, lamenting the fact that letters she received were, quote, leaked to the media. Amazing how these things keep happening, she quipped. She went on to say her newsletters are a way to keep her constituents informed, adding they, while they may sometimes reference candidates and their campaigns, I'm very careful that the wording does not advocate for or against a candidate or a ballot measure. This is just another false mischaracteri mischaracterization of my actions as lieutenant governor, she said. She said she removed the link to her newsletter archive from the lieutenant governor website this morning. So she said she's careful with the wording, with the wording, excuse me, she says, meaning she took care to use words like radical Democrat to refer to a candidate from a competing party and phrases like putting the controls back where they belong or where they should have been all along when it comes to an amendment to the Constitution being decided by voters. So the question is, do those words sound like advocating for or against a candidate or a ballot measure? Idaho's Attorney General's office seems to think so and said, should the Lieutenant Governor continue doing these things, sending out correspondence with state resources and under an official capacity, they will have no choice but to impose a civil penalty, which would be a fine of at least $250, including attorney's fees.